Welcome to Electron Lecture Online and now we're going to take a look and see how we can come up with an equation, a function that will relate the constant K, time, and the concentration of the reactant. So we're going to start simple. We're going to start with what we call a first order reaction only. We'll deal with second order reactions later. But so let's start with the first order reaction first. And so let's start with a simple reaction, what we would call a decomposition reaction where we have the reactant A decomposes into the products B and C. So we can write that the rate is equal to the constant K, the, the reaction constant, times the concentration of A. And let's, since we're dealing with first order reactions, of course the order of A will then be first order. We can also write the rate as the negative change of the concentration of A with respect to time. But here we deal, we deal with the difference in A with the difference in time, or the difference in the concentration of A with respect to time. And then if we set these two equal to each other, we can then say that the negative change of the concentration of A divided by a change in time is equal to the constant A times the concentration of A. Now what we're going to do is we're going to write it in what we call differential form. Instead of writing deltas, where delta is a finite distance, we're going to write it in terms of dA dt. That means an infinitely small change. And that will then allow us to find the exact relationship between the concentration, time, and k. Remember before when we were looking at the, at the concentration changing, and of course the rate changing, we looked at something like this, but we always have trouble to find out the exact value, the exact slope along this equation. So this would be a rate as a function of time. And what we used to do is we used to pick points on there and measure the values, and of course then we have these straight lines in between that kind of approximate the curve but not exactly. What we'll want to do is find an exact relationship between the two. So in order to do that we're going to write this in differential form. We're going to write this as minus the derivative with respect to time of the concentration of A. So how the concentration is changing as a function of time but it's an instantaneous change. We want to know the exact value anywhere along that curve. That's what we're trying to do. And that is equal to K times the concentration of A. Okay, now we want to combine the variables. We have an A here, we have an A there, we have a T here. Let's move the T there and let's move the A down here. So here we have minus the, diff the derivative or the differential of the concentration of A divided by the concentration of A is equal to, when we move this across, K times DT. And then let's move the negative sign to the right side of the equation. So now we have the D the differential of A with, divided by the concentration of A is equal to minus K times dt. And now we're ready to integrate both sides of the equation. So we're going to integrate the left side of the equation, we're going to integrate the right side of the equation. Now remember that K is simply a constant, so that can go outside the integral sign. So on the left we have the, the differential of A uh, of the concentration of A divided by the concentration of A and that is the integral that is equal to the natural log of that. So the natural log of the concentration of A plus of course a constant, a constant of integration, so plus let's call it C1 is equal to, and then we have the integral of this, oh we still have a minus, so don't forget the minus, and the K and the integral of DT of course is T and that also will have a constant of integration on that side. All right. What we want to do now is move both constants over to the right side and just call it constant. So C1 plus C2 is just a constant, let's call it C. And I need a little bit more board space, so let's continue over here. So now we have the natural log of the concentration of A is equal to minus K times T plus some constant. Now what is that constant? Well, that constant is equal to the natural log of the concentration of A when T is equal to zero. So we can find out what it is equal to when we set it to the initial condition. So when t is equal to zero, this goes to zero, and this will then equal c, or c will then equal that when t is equal to zero, which means that's the initial concentration of A, and so therefore this can then be replaced by the natural log of A is therefore equal to minus k times t plus the natural log of the initial concentration of A because that's what it is. When t is equal to zero, that goes away. C is equal to the initial condition of this, which is equal to that. And now what we have is we have an equation that relates the concentration of A to its initial concentration of A and the 
the period, the time that has elapsed since the reaction began to start. So at any point in time, if we now want to find a particular value for the concentration, we simply plug in the T and we can then read off what the concentration uh, of A is and also what the rate of A is. Actually, this is not the rate, the rate is a slope, that was an error of mine, this is actually the concentration of A. Whew, much better. So the rate is really the slope of that line. I was misleading you, sorry about that. All right, so now we have that equation, but now I want you to take a look at that equation and say, that should look familiar to you. Why? Because that looks like a linear equation, just like y is equal to mx plus b. So notice that the left side of the equation is simply the vertical axis, so what we're going to do now is we're going to set up that linear equation. On the left side we have the vertical axis set of y, we write the natural log of a. The variable on the horizontal axis is t, so instead of x, we have the t, so on the horizontal axis, we write t, so now we know the vertical axis is the natural log of a, the horizontal axis is t. The y-intercept, b, the place where it crosses the vertical axis, that's equal to the natural log of the initial concentration of a. So let's say right here, this is equal to the natural log of the initial concentration of a, and then notice that the slope is negative. The constant k is the slope of the line, and it's a negative slope, so the line would have to go like this. And the slope then is equal to the value k. k, which is of course the rate constant, determines how fast the reaction takes place and determines how fast the, the concentration of the reactant is changing. Now, if k is a large number, it's a steep slope. If k is a smaller number, it's a not so steep slope. So this would be a small k, and this would be a large k. And so that's how you can find an equation that will determine the, the ratio of the, or a relationship I should say, between the concentration of the reactant A and the time elapsed. And then notice that the slope of that relationship is simply the value of k. So that's another way to figure it out if you then plug in a current concentration, initial concentration, and the elapsed time, it will also give you the value for k. So now we have a nice equation in at least logarithmic fu function or in logarithmic form that gives you the relationship between the concentration of A and the time elapsed. Of course, that's the initial condition, and k then shows you how fast the reaction is taking place. And that's how you do that.